Good afternoon, this is Granny Fisher, and um, today we're going to talk about homestead protection. If you like this series on preparing for the next Great Depression, please click the subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click that and click all, and YouTube will notify you when I upload a new uh, video. <laughs> also, share this with your friends, and give us a thumbs up, and uh, please comment. I'd like to hear from the people that are watching these videos, and you can contribute to the conversation by putting in your two cents worth about what's going on and how you're preparing for the next Great Depression. Now I'm going to show you the animals that are around me right now, so you'll know who's making those munchy noises and who's crowing. It's Mr. Ruru. He's nearly three years old. <laughs> He's the head of my laying flock, and that's one of his hens. This is Moses. He's a 100% New Zealand buck, Kiko buck, that we leased for breeding season. And he's over here doing his deal with our young ladies. And this is one of the yearlings that was born earlier this year. She's not a yearling yet. This is uh, one of the girls that kidded last spring, and we hope she kids again this spring with twins. You hear me, Anna? And these are the other girls. And uh, this right here is Moses' favorite. That's Miss Molly. Anyway, when you hear the munching, this is the little piglets that are eating over here next to me while I'm recording. I had somebody comment about the animal noises in the background, so I thought you might want to meet the crew. We have a little herd of dairy goats, and last year we bred them to Mr. Moses, who's a Kiko. That's a meat breed, and they're very hardy. They resist parasites. They don't have as much trouble with hoof rot and that sort of thing. So we decided to breed some hardiness into our herd, and uh, we bred him to our herd last year, and we, we're breeding him to our herd again this year. And the Ruru won't shut up, so just tolerate the background noise. Anyway, today we're going to talk about uh, homestead protection. Now I'll give you a few examples from um, my experience with predators. The first time we had a predator was when we first had our first flock of chickens, which would have been in 1988, 87, 88, around there. And we had them in... Uh, a standalone garage. We had made that into a chicken coop. We were renting the house and we had permission from our landlord to modify the garage a bit and put some chickens in there. Well, uh, we had two hens that had hatched some chicks and one day we came home from a ride in the car and found that one, one of the hens that had hatched chicks was missing and there was a pile of feathers on the ground out in the yard. These were free range chickens, so they were out in the yard. We found a pile of feathers and only two of her little chicks survived. But we knew something had gotten this hen, but we didn't know what. Uh, a day or so later, I heard the chickens uh, cackling in the middle of the night and I got up and went to the front door and turned on the porch light and I saw what looked like a hen jogging across the front yard. She was a light colored hen, so I could see her, but I couldn't see the fox that had her in his mouth. But when I turned on that porch light, he dropped that hen. He looked at me with a really annoyed expression, and then he ran off this way, and she ran off that way. Well, that night, we put our blue healer out in the yard and made her start staying out in the yard at night, and we never lost another hen. We never lost another chicken. Uh, that fox had snatched the hen off her little nest on the ground and hadn't hurt her chicks, but it was in the spring and I think the fox was feeding some of its kits. And so it's understandable, but we put the dog out at night after that and we never lost another chicken to that fox. Okay, we've lived in other places where there were foxes in the neighborhood, but we always had a dog and so the foxes never came after our chickens. Foxes are real leery of dogs. Okay, so dogs are one of your first defenses against predators. 
Uh, another time I lost a, a hen to a hawk. I had just driven up in the driveway and saw something brown take flight out of the corner of my eye. And I got out and looked and there was a hen and she'd had her head snipped off and her beak snipped off of the head and the hawk had done that. And uh, so, you know, you have to watch out for hawks. Uh, one time uh, I had two livestock guardian dogs, one in the yard and one with my herd of goats. And one morning when I got up, I saw some of the younger goats just walking around the yard and I said, what are they doing out? We had electric fence at the time. We had a uh, partial uh, regular field fence, but also electric fence. And my Anatolian shepherd was in the yard and she had a, a scratch, a, a gouge along the muzzle. And um, the Akbash, which is another livestock guardian dog, was in, in the pen with the goats. He was still staying with the goats. But about 30 or 40 feet of electric fence was down. It had gotten pulled uh, pretty well across the uh, ground from where it had been standing. And so something had tried to get in after the goats. And those two dogs had driven them off. And I gave them some nice venison for breakfast that day as a reward. But I knew they'd fought them off because the Anatolian had had a gouge along her muzzle where she had fought something. And I've seen her kill before. She was, uh, she's, she was like a streak of lightning when she moved and she was a killing machine. I saw her kill a groundhog with three shakes of her head. But we didn't lose anything in that occasion, but something, some predator had tried to get in the pen and the dogs had driven it off. This year, a few months ago, um, we had a dog attack. We, had, uh, we have our pens, as you can see back here, we have stock panels and hog wire fencing in our goat pens. Well, a neighbor had allowed us to use several acres of her um, field back here behind us. And so we had put electric fence around that area and were letting the goats out in that area. We would lock them up at night, but during the day they could go out there and browse in the brushy area on her property. And I was getting ready to lie down and take a nap one afternoon and I happened to have my window open. And there are several things that coincided to save the animals that day. Um, I just credit it to God because my window happened to be open and a lot of times it's not. And the rooster alerted me to the danger. I heard him making his alert sound. Not like he's been crowing here, that's his annoyed sound. <laughs> but I know his alert sound and he was alerting that something was wrong. And I got up, I grabbed up a little pocket pistol, and I told my husband, I said, something's going on in the back 40, I'm going out. And I put on my big rubber boots and went running out the back door, and, um, and I could see brown heads bobbing around in the pen on the far side, and realized something was after the goats. And I heard one of the goats scream, she wasn't mad, she was, ah, she was screaming. And so when I got to the pen, I realized a dog had a hold of Anna by her back thigh, her right thigh, and wouldn't let go. He was hanging on to it. He was, he was wanting to kill her. And there were already two dead chickens in the pen, which is why the rooster had alerted. He knew this thing this thing, this brutal thing was after his flock. Well, I, uh, I started screaming for my husband and, um, and I uh, fired a couple of rounds next to the dog. I didn't want to kill the dog. I just wanted him to let go of my goat, um, but he wouldn't let go. And my husband came running up beside me and he said, give me your handgun, go get a bigger gun. It, my handguns, my pocket pistol's a little 32, and it wasn't very threatening to the dog. But anyway, my husband took it, and um, and I ran back inside to get some bigger weapons. 
And meanwhile, he fired a couple of shots into this dog. It was a pit bull, and it was accompanied by a beagle. And the old beagle was just running along for the uh, game, you know, for the chase. They had been chasing cats in the neighborhood for about three days before they made it inside our electric fence. And um, so my husband fired a couple of rounds into the uh, pit bull, and he still wouldn't let go. And um, so uh, when I got there, I gave him the larger gun, and he said, get her out of here, and I grabbed the goat by the collar. And by then, the dog had finally let go of her, and I pulled her out of the pen and shut the gate, and my husband dispatched the dog. Now, he let the beagle go. The beagle was an old dog and was just along for the ride. But that pit bull had killed two chickens, didn't eat them. He just killed them, just killed them and left them there. And he uh, was going to kill my goat. Um, as it turned out, my uh, son had uh, some stitching material that he used for making leather goods. He had a, a sail maker's needle and some cordage, and I couldn't get a vet to look at her. She was bleeding, and I wanted the vets to just stitch her up, but there are no vets in our area. There's no vets within about 40 or 50 miles that uh, handle goats. So be aware if you get goats, it's hard to find a vet that knows anything about goats. So anyway, I called my son and he came down with his needle and his cordage and he stitched her up and we doctored her with some alcohol and some iodine and she stood very still the whole time he was stitching her up. Animals know when you're trying to help. And um, she's doing fine now. I just showed you a picture of her eating her hay, so Anna, is the one that was uh, ripped open in her leg. She had three large uh, tears in her leg. One was like about three or four inches, and, um, and it, one went down to the bone, but they didn't cut through the muscle, so that was good. And we knew who the dog belonged to, so my husband called the neighbor and uh, explained to her what went on, and, she said, do I owe you anything? And he said, no. He said, do you want me to bury the dog for you? And she said, yeah, I'd appreciate it. So that's how it worked out. But uh, firearm is an important security uh, tool on your farm. Now your first protection on the homestead is good fencing. And we use stop panels. You can see right here, stop panels. We use uh, electric netting, which I get from Premier. This is a very good company, although their prices have gone up drastically the last couple of years. More people are fencing in livestock now, uh, but we, we have electric fencing from them. And I got a uh, solar powered, uh, top of the line solar powered fence charger from Parmac. I'll put a link down below for these two companies. They're very good for electric fencing. If you want to move your fencing around or if you need to fence in an area temporarily or perhaps if you're using your goats or your chickens to uh, clear some areas for you. Uh, this is excellent, excellent. Um, the uh, Premier Fencing, this is their catalog. Just came in the mail this week. But, um, Stock panels are good, electric netting is good, regular electric fence is okay, but not as good. That's how the dog got in our pen. Um, one of the wires had fallen on the fence and they just came right through the electric fence. So uh, fencing and walls are your best protection. If you have a house with a large yard, fence it in if you can. Put a fence around it and put a dog in there. Dogs are your second protection. You really want a dog. I remember reading uh, the Little House books to my children when they were young, and um, uh, Laura Ingalls' father, Pa, asked these people who had had their horses stolen from their wagon while they slept, he said, well, didn't your dog warn you? And they said, we don't have a dog. And later he told his family, who comes into this country without a dog? 
because you really need a dog. Dogs can't see as well as humans, but they can hear and smell much better and they will let you know if somebody's up to no good in your area, including dogs. Uh, some of them, especially livestock guardian dogs, will alert to hawks, uh, all kinds of predators like that. Um, some of the breeds of livestock guardian dogs you might look at are Anatolian, Akmash, uh, Great Pyrenees, Marama, Kangal, Karakachin, those are all well-known livestock guardian breeds. Now they're big dogs. Uh, they do eat more than a small dog, but not as much as you would think because they don't expend a lot of energy except when necessary. They stay with the flock or herd, or if you raise them with your children, they'll stay with your children. And they consider whoever they're raised with as their family, and they will protect their family to the death. They're very gentle with the babies, but they will protect. And, um, and I highly recommend that you get a dog, especially get a livestock guardian dog if you have children or livestock. Okay, so after fences and walls, after having a dog, you need to be aware. If you hear your animals alerting to something, or if you even hear wild animals or birds alerting to something, Crows will call if there's a predator in the area. Sometimes blue jays or cardinals will alert to um, a cat or uh, some other type of predator in the area. So pay attention and be aware. And if you notice anything out of the ordinary, go investigate. Okay, the next thing that's necessary for homestead protection is a good uh, weapon, a firearm. And um, as with my example, we used a handgun. That's a good personal protection too if times get more dangerous in our area. Uh, a shotgun is good for putting down predators or um, rabid dogs or anything like that that you just need to make sure they're down. You might also want a, uh, a 22 for shooting small game if you like to hunt, or a hunting rifle, an AR-15, or uh, a bolt-action rifle of some sort, 30-06. These are good hunting rifles. With some of the violence going on in our country and with a, a, a disputed election coming up and the people talking about we might have violence as a result of that, be sure to be prepared to protect yourself and your family. And um, do what you can to make your homestead a safe place to be. This is Granny Fisher. I'll see you next time.